This is Access Hollywood, and we're rocking and rolling through 30 years with the one and only Rolling Stone magazine. On the cover of the Rolling Stone. How great is it to hear Dr. Hook, huh? Pretty awesome, huh? Oh, man. And when you think of rock and roll, of course, you have to think of Rolling Stone magazine. Now, believe it or not, an incredible 30 years old. Hi, everybody. I'm Nancy O'Dell. Hi, Nance. Hi, folks. I'm Pat O'Brien. We've got an insider's look at the number one music magazine, Rolling Stone, for three decades. It's been setting the trends in music and even in fashion. It's a who's who and a what's what of the hottest sounds, coolest styles, and basically all things rock and roll. You're absolutely right. And one man is responsible for this successful magazine, Jan Wenner, who joins us now for this hour of music from his office in New York City. Well, thanks. It's hard to believe it's been 30 years since we started Rolling Stone. In that first issue, we'd sold 5,000 copies. One interview stands alone in Wenner's mind, John Lennon, an artist who would play a big role in the history of Rolling Stone. I think what we couldn't foresee was the kind of role that John Lennon would play in the development of Rolling Stone itself. A feeling also shared by John Lennon and Yoko Ono's son, Sean. The relationship between my parents and Jan and Rolling Stone throughout the years has been really kind of personal and, you know, I think they helped each other out at different times when they both needed it. John Lennon appeared on the cover of the very first issue in 1967. Three years later, he gave Winner an exclusive interview. Given a year after the Beatles broke up, Lennon revealed his feelings on the Fab Four's artistry, as you will hear in this rare audio interview recording. In spite of all the things, that the Beatles really could play music together when they weren't uptight. We've played together so long that it fits. Lennon's words certainly delivered a strong impact, but it was this 1980 cover photo of him and wife Yoko Ono, photographed by Annie Leibovitz, that is best remembered. Poignant even more so because it was taken just hours before his murder. It's the most riveting cover, I think, that we've ever done in Rolling Stone. And how's this for the ultimate fashion statement? Appearing on Rolling Stone in your birthday suit. Well, many stars have done it. Jennifer Aniston, Brooke Shields, Demi Moore, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers have appeared in the buff. The only couple to pose nude? John Lennon and Yoko Ono. What a cover that was. Well, bearing all for a magazine shows how powerful and influential Rolling Stone has become over the last 30 years. All of us here at Access Hollywood would like to congratulate the folks at the magazine on reaching this milestone. And thanks to Jan for being a great guest host, Jan. More music stars are on the way in just a moment here. Dick hasn't always been on target with his picks. He admits in the early 60s, he thought a group called The Beatles was going nowhere. That's one I missed. I thought it was highly derivative music. It was borrowed from Chuck Berry and the Everly Brothers and Buddy Holly and the rest. The only thing different was they had these goofy haircuts and an English accent. And I misjudged entirely what the audience reaction was going to be. And boy, did I ever miss. With all the memories come mementos. And Dick's office is a virtual museum of rock and roll. This is a picture of the Beatles in the original Cavern Club. And let me show you this. This is a ticket where you could see the Beatles for, I think, originally 42 cents American money.